those of you that are going on the hayride to pay me today, if not this morning, then tonight. Um, the cost is on the glass board. I believe it's $5 for adults and either two or three for kids. I think it's two and uh, below 12. And so take a look at that on the board. And, and if you're making out a check, make it out to the church, not me personally. All right. We're looking forward to a good time on Saturday evening. A couple of comments with regard to our discipleship classes. We're drawing close to the end. If you were in my Saturday class but missed it this week, you can pick it up by either coming tomorrow night at 7.30 or Tuesday morning at 11, all right? Because of Sandy, the schedule kind of shifted a little bit so that Saturday for this week and next week is the first class, Monday's the second class, and Tuesday's the third class, all right? Then we have a Thanksgiving break and we have one final week with the normal schedule. So again, for this week, if you miss Saturday and want to pick it up in this session, if you miss and you can't pick it up in the weekly rotation, um, just to be clear, there will be, and you'll see in the next couple of weeks, there will be sign-up sheets starting for the next term, which will be January, February, March. And I'm going to let everybody know, if you missed a session, I'm going to let you know, I'm going to give you a record of what that is, and try to give you an idea of when that class will be taught so that you can make it up in the next term. There are more classes coming, but I need to have time to write them. And so that will, the next level of classes will be, uh, hopefully if, if plans go according to plan, um, we will be able to have that roll out in September. All right, so a couple of more sessions will occur um, with this level one, and I appreciate everybody who's been faithful to coming. And I'm looking forward to those of you that haven't yet joined us being able to do so starting in January. Okay, so if you miss Saturday, you can make it up Monday or Tuesday of this week. If not, you will have a chance starting in January, February, and March to make those up as well. Um, also, I want to mention to everyone, um, do take a look at the month of December and pay attention to the order of things. We basically... Um, of course, Dad already mentioned to you the Christmas banquet in our weekend, the 8th and the 9th. The next week is actually when we will have our Christmas giving service. And uh, most of you know about this. If you do not, this is a service where we come, we put the focus on Jesus, and we give to Him in monetary form His gift. And the, uh, the money will go into global missions, into world missions, I mean into the, into the church outside of us. It does not go to us. And the way that we do it is simply make sure that Jesus is getting the biggest and the best gift. Whether you give small gifts or whether you give much, sit down with your budget. And if you don't do Christmas with a budget, I would highly suggest that you do so. Because there are marketers out there that are trying to bankrupt you. So use a budget. Sit down and, and cut that budget by the amount you're going to give to Jesus. You say, well, then how am I going to take care of my family? Well, I won't bore you with all the stories of how God's going to show you deals. He's going to have stores give you more than what you bought. He's going to stretch that dollar like you have never seen, and it'll build your faith, and it will be an awesome corrective to a season that is full of greed and selfishness. And uh, I encourage you to participate in that. It is not a gimmick. You all know we are not in jeopardy of the electric being turned off. We are not being repossessed. There is no debt. There is no money problem. God has been good to us. Amen? Amen? This is about us participating with Him. This is His birthday. We don't have Christmas if it's not about Jesus. This isn't just a holiday for us. This is about Him. And uh, so I encourage you, but that's on the 16th. And then the last Christmas-related event church-wise, specifically Christmas-related, is our children's party on the 19th. And after that, if you're in town, we'll be having church. But if you're traveling, travel safe and hurry home quickly, all right? So I try to make it so that around Christmas time, you have the ability to make the choice as far as family. Many of you have different obligations and things, and so we try to push church events, this family, a little earlier. And so really the 16th uh, with our Christmas giving service. Now, if you're in town... And you're like, well, the preacher said I can do what I want to do. That is not what I said. 
Everybody poke your neighbor and say, the preacher did not say if you're in town you can cut church. Go ahead, tell them, poke them. Now, if you're traveling, I understand. But if you're in town, you got time to come to church. All right? And uh, it'll be, the way the calendar falls, it'll be regular service time. So Sundays will be regular, Wednesday will be regular, and uh, we'll look forward to spending time together as well. All right? Good to see the Moody's again. This will become more of a pattern because Renee has thrown out a hook that is going to at least lasso mom and, uh, and, and dad somewhat. Um, as they get pulled in. You think dad will be coming even more than mom. Okay, all right, all right. There we go. Baby due the 18th. Two days early would be nice. That'd be my birthday. Mom, you're looking for what? You're looking for the 14th. Renee's good with any of those. <laughs> We're praying for Renee that everything go well. And uh, we are in the midst of waiting. She's not scheduled this baby, so we'll, we'll see what happens. And uh, we're looking forward to, um, let's see, I guess a third generation of Cohens in this place. Quite interesting. I don't know. I remember the second generation, and they were quite a pill. So I don't know what a third generation is going to be. <laughs> Amen. It's good to see you in the house of the Lord. I welcome all of you. And uh, I'm glad that you've chosen to be with us this morning. I turn your attention to two passages of Scripture. John chapter 2. And then also, if you want to put your finger in it or put a bookmark on it, Hebrews chapter 12. John chapter 2, beginning with verse 23. Because of the miraculous signs Jesus did in Jerusalem at the Passover celebration, Many began to trust in him. But Jesus didn't trust them. Because he knew human nature. No one needed to tell him what mankind is really like. Because of the miraculous signs that Jesus did in Jerusalem at the Passover celebration, many began to trust in him. But Jesus did not trust them. Because he knew. Because he knew. Now, quickly over to Hebrews chapter 12. The writer of Hebrews, beginning with verse 1, says, Therefore... Since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. And now he is seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. This morning... I want to preach to you this thought, knowing but committed, knowing but committed. Everybody stay with me for a moment. God knows what a shifty people we are. It's one of those rare moments we probably read over it way too quickly and we don't pick up the significance in John chapter 2. If you, A.V., if you'd put up verse 24. People are believing. They're trusting in Jesus. Nicodemus, just the next 
A couple verses in chapter 3 says, We know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. What was God's response? I'm not trusting you. I know who you are. I know what makes you up. No one needed to tell him about humanity. And that's depressing on the one hand. Because what it basically says is on the one hand, while we put our faith and our trust in God, God actually isn't trusting us. You say, well, that was them. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I don't think we're any better than them. If we're honest here today, has humanity really improved? Have we really changed? Have we systemically altered the scenario of our nature? The answer is unequivocally no. Perhaps we've even gotten worse. But at the very least, we're just as bad as they were. And so it's a reality check to realize that God has not put His trust in us. I know that a lot of preachers have preached things different than this, and, 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 and I, I shudder to, to preach this part of the sermon, and yet it's in the Word. It even makes more hard to understand how it was that God left the gospel in the hands of human beings. And perhaps we need to adjust it a little bit. Maybe the only reason He could leave the gospel in the hands of human beings is because He was coming back Himself to live in those human beings. Perhaps it's better to say the gospel was left in the hands of His Holy Spirit. And not simply in the hands of human beings. And I'm not here to take you out of the equation. I'm not here to tell you that we do not participate in the gospel. We are called, but notice it's by the power of the Spirit that we bear witness unto the gospel. But the reality is, is Jesus did not trust them. And the reasons were not temporary. They were not conditional. They were not just for that time and that place. Because the reason was not because he knew the Jews. Because he knew the people who lived in Jerusalem. Because he knew the first century mindset. No. He knew human nature. And no one needed to inform him, warn him, or give him information about what mankind, humanity, is really like. Now stay with me, because this feels absolutely depressing. But stay with me. We are not trustworthy. No, not a single one of us. And let me tell you who knows that more acutely and more clearly than anyone in this place. God. He knows. I don't know if it, you've ever been disappointed, been hurt, they're depressed by the failure of a fellow human being. Could have been a wife or a husband. Could have been a child or a parent. Could have been a friend. Could have been a brother or sister in Christ. And there are times when we look at this lack of of trustworthiness that life can get quite depressing you kind of throw your hands up in the air and go 
What is going on? What is happening here? Why is my wife acting this way? Or why is my husband conducting himself in this way? Or why are my children doing this? Or why are my parents doing this? Or what is up with my brother or sister in Christ? Let's turn a little bit of a corner. Do you know why you need to talk to Jesus about that? Because it's not a news flash to him. It may be a news flash to you, but it is not a news flash to him. This is early on in the Gospel of John, before his ministry has hardly even begun, and we get a statement about Jesus' knowledge. He knew the nature of humanity. And he did not put his faith or his trust in them. He knew about humanity. So when someone fails you, when someone fails me, the best person to talk to about it is not another human being. Because another human being is going to have one of two responses. They're either going to make you more depressed because they're going to talk to you about all the people who've hurt them. And then you both can sit there in a big puddle of pity about how horrible it is. Or you're going to talk to somebody who hasn't yet been hurt. Who's got such a rosy picture of life. And then you feel like the creep. You feel like the jerk. You feel like, well, what's wrong with me? They haven't been hurt. They haven't been hurt. They haven't been ignored. They haven't been let down. Talk to Jesus about it. You see, the first human beings he made, he built them a beautiful world. And then he took a portion of that world and he made it perfect, the Garden of Eden. And he made them perfect. And he placed them in the Garden of Eden. And then he exchanged and gave to them a piece of himself. For he made them in his image and after his likeness. And with that image and likeness came the ability to choose. The ability to think. I love animals. But even the smartest of them is dumb compared to the dumbest one of us. not being rude, but the smartest one of them is dumb compared to the dumbest one of us. Our minds are amazing. God's statement at the Tower of Babel was anything that they can imagine to do, they can marshal the resources and put the ingenuity and the creativity together to make it happen. This was what he shared with us. And he placed us in the garden. And there, immediately, the first human beings broke God's trust. One tree, all the rest you can eat. One tree, don't eat of it. You need to talk to God when you're disappointed. You need to talk to God when you've been hurt. Because God knows. Let me just insert something real quick here. Church, we need to, and I'm talking to me as well as to you, we need to not lose faith when people fail. Because people are not God. We need to have faith in God, not in people. Doesn't mean you have to be cruel. Doesn't mean you have to be nasty. Doesn't mean you don't have to love. But don't put your faith in people. Put your faith in God. Don't put your faith in people. Don't trust people. I didn't say go around and, and be mean to them. I didn't say go around and, and be nasty to them. But don't trust people. 
think of how different it will be when your husband or your wife fails and you expected them to fail. You say, so it's all right for them to fail? No, that's not what I said. I didn't say it was all right to fail. But if you do not expect your husband or wife to be perfect, you will be less angry when they aren't. And by the way, it sure makes life a little easier when you also fall short. And they also, I'm not talking about that sin is okay. That's not the point of what I'm saying to you. How many fights in your marriage are about sin? And how many fights in your marriage are about stupid stuff? Now maybe I just have a stupid marriage. But Reggie and I have more fights. We've got more conflict. We spend more hours at each other's throat about stupid stuff than we do about sin. For some weird reason, when one of us sins, somehow we know what to do with that. We, we seem to rise to the occasion for that one. The ones where we're nasty, the ones where we, where we hurt one another is because we expect one another not to be petty. Bad news. Humans are petty. Bad news. Humans are shifty. Bad news. Humans are not trustworthy. Now, I, I'm either going to have some people get a hold of this message this morning or everybody's going to go out of here and say, my Lord Almighty, i got to change churches. I'm asking you, please hold on, because i got good news that's coming in just, just, just a moment. But the good news doesn't come through the way it needs to this morning unless we get a hold of reality. Reality is we are not good. How dare you talk of me that way? I've had some of you, and I don't get mad at me. There's many of you. I've had some of you argue with me. Many of you argue with me how pure and innocent and, and good your children are. No! No, they're not. They're imps. And in more pejorative sense than intelligent, manipulative persons of smaller persuasion, they are absolutely imps. They are little devils. You say, how dare you talk about children that way? Let me tell you why I know they are. Because they are my children. They are your children. You gave it to them. You pass down the same stuff. You go, well, I don't do what they do. No, you just do it at a different spot. Well, I don't act that way. No, you act this way. Why not? No, you're just as untrustworthy as they are. Come on, we need to have some reality here. Patricia, we're on for Tuesday night, right? Don't get mad at me now. Don't, 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 I'm, I know I'm preaching a little intense here this morning. We are not trustworthy. And the only arbiter of truth that I have absolute trust in the scriptures tell me Jesus did not trust humanity for he knew human nature. So your judgment is more clear than God Almighty who knows everything and who is the creator of all of us? Now I understand this really messes with your worldview. Some of you it messes with your worldview of others. Some of you, it messes with your worldview of self. Some of you pride yourself on being a good person. Can I break the news to you? You are not. You let your spouse have the true freedom to speak to you. And you will find out very quickly that while they love you, you are not a basically good person. got problems you're selfish we want our own way we're always right I know us Beardsley's 
seem like we're always right. It's just we talk louder than the rest of you. You all think you're right. The scripture says every man thinks, and I think it means every human, not every male, but every human thinks they're right in their own eyes. Here's this God who loved the world, 316, just a few verses later. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. This God has descended to earth, taken on human form, and here he is. And the scriptures tell us he don't trust a single one of us. He don't trust Peter, and he don't trust John. He don't trust his mom. He don't trust Judas. He don't trust Matthew. You say, well, good reason for Matthew. He don't trust Bartholomew. He don't trust Philip. He don't trust anybody. He don't trust them. This is what Jesus knows. He knows we're not trustworthy. And yet. And yet, this God who came and took on human flesh was born into humanity. The writer of Hebrews says he went to a cross and he laid himself down on that cross and he experienced the beatings. He experienced the ridicule. He experienced the buffets, the beard plucking, the crown of thorns upon his head, the nails through his wrists and his feet. And the writer of Hebrews says that he went to that cross and he scorned. The word despised, you need to understand there, the sense of that is not that he was like, oh, this is nasty. No, he scorned. He treated it as not worthy of paying attention to. For the joy that was set before him. How in heaven's name, Jesus, do you have any promise of joy? John chapter 2 tells us there was no promise of joy. But what you see is the more acute and untrustworthy humanity is and was, then you see in contrast the great love of God and His absolute commitment that even when you are not trustworthy, He is trustworthy. Even when you are not committed, He has already put it all on the line. He's already paid the price. No promise you'll repent. No promise you'll be baptized in Jesus' name. No promise you'll let Him fill you with His Spirit. No promise that you'll walk holy as His Spirit leads you. No promise. And in fact, everything He knows says this human race is not trustworthy. And yet, His love is greater than His knowledge. And His commitment to you is without reservation. That's the God that I choose despite my shiftiness to serve. Because when I look at how absolutely untrustworthy I am, then I look at the cross I look at him and he paid for every one of my sins with not a single assurance that I would give them to him. There are people that he died for 
that he died for in vain. Because they, I'm not talking about present, I'm talking about people that are in the grave. And I, and I don't even have to know who they are, but I know there are people who have turned away the gospel. Who have rejected the love of God. Who have said, I'm on my own. Who have literally had the stupidity to say, I'll let my works, I trust my works more than I trust the sacrifice and the love of Almighty God. I'll stick to my game plan. And my message to you this morning has two purposes. Number one, if you've been disappointed, get your eyes off of humans. They never were trustworthy, so stop trusting them. Put your trust in God. That's why, Christians, you can trust everyone, even when they're not trustworthy. Because your trust isn't in them, it's in God. I said a mouthful right there, I'm going to say it one more time, and I'm not going to preach it any further. The reason you can trust everyone when they are not trustworthy is because your true trust is not in them. It is in the God who loves you, who is perfectly trustworthy. That's why you can operate in a Christian fashion. That's why you can hold your peace and let God fight your battles. That's why you do not have to stand up, but you rather fight evil with good, not evil with evil. Because I don't know how many times people have turned away from God. Not because God has failed them. But because the untrustworthy humans have failed them. Humans are not trustworthy. But He is. Get your eyes off the humans. You'll find your spirit start lifting. Get your eyes off the humans. You'll find you won't be quite as depressed. Get your eyes off the humans. You'll find you won't be spending so much time trying to figure it out. Get your eyes off the humans. I'm not telling you that a husband and a wife don't have accountability to one another. But get your eyes off the humans. It doesn't matter what you go through. It doesn't matter what you're dealing with. No matter what the circumstances, greater is He that is in you than he that is in the world. By the power of the Spirit, you are more than a conqueror through Him who loved you. You are in control. Absolute and total control. Not because they're trustworthy and not because you're trustworthy, but because God... God is trustworthy. And He promised He would never leave you and He would never forsake you. He would be with you always, even unto the ends of the world. You can walk in perfect peace and confidence in a world that is not trustworthy because He is trustworthy. That's how you hold your peace. And don't lash out. That's how you turn the other cheek. That's how you love your enemies. That's how you bless them that curse you. That's how you do good to them who despitefully use you. Because it's not about them. It's about Him. Second point of this morning is this. The message of the Gospel is a simple message. I'm a sinner. You're a Savior. I'm willing to do whatever you tell me to do to be saved. The rest is footnotes. The rest is details. And this morning... My message to somebody's is can you see a God who knew you weren't trustworthy and yet He still went to a cross and died so that He could offer you salvation. Can you see that God and walk away from Him? 
If you can, I don't know what to say to you. I have no sales pitch that can overcome that. I have no ability to overcome that choice. But I believe this morning there are some here who you've been spending too much time looking at how untrustworthy you are. There can't be a way that God loves me. There can't be a way that God can save me. Look at who I am. God doesn't know who I am. I'm here this morning to tell you God knows exactly who you are. In fact, God's picture of you is worse than your own picture of yourself. Because I don't know a single person here, no matter how depraved a sinner you are, that goes around and paints the picture I've painted for you this morning, that there is no area, there is no function, there is no aspect of you that is trustworthy. We always have at least one that we say, well, I'm pretty good at this, or well, I got it together here, or, or, or I'm not too bad here. No, from God's perspective, He does not put His trust in you. So what's your excuse this morning? Why would you not ask that God to forgive you of your sins? Why would you not allow yourself to be baptized in the waters of baptism and forgiveness of sins in the name of Jesus? Why would you not when there's a God who loved you and committed Himself to you in spite of your lack of trustworthiness. You see, if you've taken what I've preached this morning and you've said, well, since I'm untrustworthy and since I'm going to fail anyway, I might as well just go do what I want to do then you miss the point about God's love. You miss the point about God's commitment. And I don't know what to say to you because my heart and the hearts of many in this congregation are moved deeply when we recognize how utterly failing we are and how utterly committed He has been to us. That's why I get up in the morning and even if I've been battling a sin for years, I try one more time. That's why I get up in the morning and I say, Jesus, I didn't have a very good day yesterday. I didn't emulate what I should have emulated. I acted in ways that I shouldn't have acted. But Lord, this is a new day and I'm going to give it another shot. Because if you're willing to commit to me, then I'm willing to try once again. I'm willing to repent once again. I'm willing to pursue that holiness of lifestyle once again. I may fail. I know I'm not trustworthy. I have such a track record of failure. But God, your commitment, you demonstrated your love for us in that while we were yet sinners, you died for us. Knowing, but committed. That's an awesome God this morning. That's an awesome God. He went into that cross knowing we weren't trustworthy. Sister Bev, I love you, but you aren't trustworthy. Sister Thelma, I'm sure you love me, but I'm not trustworthy. I'm not trying to hurt you, Lisa, but I imagine I will someday if I haven't already. I'm not trustworthy. Don't put your trust in one another. Put your trust in God. Because when you put your trust in God, you will find that you can do right towards one another, not because of them, but because of Him. Don't trust yourself. The reason this is so important is you won't repent if you don't call you who you are. You don't get up every morning and look in the mirror. Say, I see you. You stinking rotten spirit. You lustful carnal attitude. You ungodly impulses. I see you. I don't trust you. I'm looking for you today. 
But the reason I'm not depressed, the reason I'm not without hope, is because there is another component that's going on in my life. There's a God who knows exactly who I am and still loves me. There's a God who knows exactly what's wrong with me and He's still committed to me. There's a God who knows exactly what's wrong with me, but He died for me. So even though I'm not trustworthy, See, it's not just don't trust one another. It's don't trust yourself. Young people, the bishop once said it. I just use it as one graphic example. He said, I can put you in a circumstance and you'll sin. Do you know how you avoid that? You don't trust you. You plot against the bad you. Some of you know how bad it is. You know there's places you don't need to be going. You know there's things you don't need to be reading. You know there's things you don't need to be listening to. You know there's people you don't need to be hanging out with because you know what this flesh is doing. You know what it's doing. Don't trust you. Yeah, but that's so depressing. Look at what a horrible person I am. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know, I know, I know. But there's a God. I don't know how to explain to you and I don't know how to give the rationale. But that God, even though you are a stinking rotten sinner, loves you. Put your trust in Him. That's how you get up every day. That's how you repent of your sins every day. That's how you fight the battle. That's how you can be with the Apostle Paul who says, even though every time I go to do good, evil is present with me. In my flesh, there is a law that is at war with the law of God. Yet... With my mind, I choose God, even while my flesh is bound under the law of sin. Because greater is He that is in me than he that is in the world. Greater is the love of God than the sin of my flesh. Greater is the commitment of God than my untrustworthiness. That's why the gospel's good news. That's why we have hope today. That's why we can exalt in Jesus. Because when we've been obedient to Him, when we've turned our lives over to Him, when we say, man, I don't have it together, but oh, Jesus, you do. That's why we find ourselves with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Forgive anybody who's ever painted the picture for you. That Christians are trustworthy. And then you come in contact with some of them and found out they weren't. They're humans. But Jesus is trustworthy. Anything He says, He keeps His word. If you haven't been baptized in Jesus' name, you need to be this morning. you got a sin that you say, there's no way I can repent of this. It's too horrible. You need to repent this morning. If you haven't accepted the Spirit of God within your life, by the infilling of His Spirit, speaking in other tongues, you need to let Him come in. Because that's who you put your trust in. Because that's the God who knew. But committed. He knew. And yet... He committed. Would you stand? Jesus, I worship you, Lord. This altar is open and I'm done. Would you come and pray? Would you come and talk to Him? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus, thank you, Lord, for loving me. God, thank you, Lord, for helping me realize that I don't have to be depressed by who I am. I can exalt in who you are. God, you are committed, Lord. If I want you, you are going to come through. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You committed without any indication of whether I was going to love you. So now you're all the more committed to me. Hallelujah, 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 Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. God, we exalt in your presence. We glorify you, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. 
Jesus, we love you. Jesus, we praise you, Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, I worship your name, Lord. God, I praise you and I magnify you, Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Jesus, we praise your name. Jesus, we worship you, Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. We have hope in You, O oh God. Yes, we have hope in You, O oh God. Not in ourselves, not in one another, but we have hope in You, Jesus. God, that's how we can be kind to one another because of Your kindness to us. That is how we can be forgiving one another because of Your forgiveness of us. That is how we can be gentle with one another because You are gentle with us. That is how, O oh God, we can do what is right towards one another. Not because we're deserving, but because You, You do it first towards us. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank You, Lord Jesus. Thank You, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. God, touch Sister Connie, Lord. Yes, Jesus. God, touch, Lord, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, let your healing virtue flow. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, Jesus. God, in your name we agree together, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You've been faithful, Lord, to my sister. God, be faithful to her now once again, Lord. Touch her in her body, Lord. Yes, let your healing virtue flow in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus, in your name, God, touch this little one. Let your healing virtue flow, Lord Jesus. Touch her in her body. God, let your healing virtue touch her now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. God, I worship you and I praise you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You can see why the Apostle Paul said, I can't boast in me, but I can boast in the Lord. Oh, our exaltation doesn't come from us. It comes from who He is. Our confidence isn't in us. It's in Him. Our hope is not in us. It's in Him. Our power is not in us. It's in Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I exalt in You, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 How is it that love never fails? Because God is love. It's not us. It's Him. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Our hope is in You, O God. Our hope is in You, O God. Our hope is in You, O God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can be everything You want me to be, Jesus, because of You. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 Jesus, hallelujah, Jesus, hallelujah, Jesus, hallelujah, Jesus, hallelujah, 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 God, we praise your name, God, we worship you, yes, Jesus, we worship you, oh God. There's a beautiful presence of God in this place. Would you entertain it right now? Wherever you're at and wherever, whatever place you are, whether you're sitting or standing or kneeling, would you entertain the presence of God in this place? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. He wants to encourage you of how much He loves you. He's not going to leave you in your sin. But He loves you. Hallelujah. You didn't trick God into loving you. You didn't deceive Him. He knows everything. But He loves you. He knows what's wrong with you even more than you do. He knows your failings even more than you do. But He loves you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He loves you. He loves you, he loves you, he loves you. Hallelujah, He loves you with a love that's greater than anything. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Right now, would you lift your hands to the Lord and worship? Would you begin to praise Him right now all across this congregation? Together, would you praise Him? Would you thank Him for His love? Hallelujah, hallelujah. No matter what you feel like right now, would you thank Him? Take your mind off of yourself. Take your mind off of your failing. And would you begin to praise Him? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Would you begin to praise Him? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Would you begin to worship Him? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Would you thank Him for His kindness? Thank Him for His mercy and His forgiveness. Hallelujah. Praise Him for His greatness and His power. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I worship You, Jesus. I praise Your name and I glorify You. You are an awesome God and I love You. God, You are trustworthy. And I thank You. Thank You, O God. Thank You, O God. Thank You. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. You will never fail us, O God. You will never fail us, O God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise your name, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise your name, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise your name, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise your name. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. He's a great God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. We have a guest visiting with us from the island of Jamaica. Damien, would you please stand? Everybody, would you welcome Damien? He's visiting with us. Be sure and make him welcome. And if you ever get a chance to visit his home, do so. It's a beautiful place. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. God bless you.